Speaking of mustached men, the final Beatles recording featuring John, Paul, George and Ringo is here. Released today, entitled Now and Then, the song comes from a batch of unreleased demos written by the late John Lennon in the 70s. McCartney, Harrison and Starr used the tape to construct two songs that were released in the mid-90s, but there were technical limitations to finishing Now and Then, and that changed in 2022 when artificial intelligence restoration methods came into play. You just heard the last song the Beatles will ever release. Now and Then came out today, decades after John Lennon wrote it, and more than 50 years after the band split. When we lost John, we knew that it was really over. But in 1994, amazingly, an interesting opportunity arose. We could make more music together. Lennon recorded a demo of his vocals for the song in the late 1970s. He was assassinated in 1980, but his widow, Yoko Ono, gave the demo to the remaining Beatle members in 1994. I was talking to Yoko, and she said, Ah, oh, I think I've got a tape of John. We were pretty excited. A new John song. Amazing. To hear John's voice, that's the thing that we should cherish. The track was worked on by Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr and George Harrison for a year, but they couldn't separate Lennon's voice from the sound of a piano in the track. After Harrison died in 2001, it took McCartney and Starr more than two decades to begin working on the song again. So in the mix, we could lift John's voice without lifting the piano, which had always been one of the problems. Now we could mix it and make a proper record of it. Technical restoration methods that separated the Beatles' voices from background sounds during the making of the 2021 documentary series, The Beatles Get Back, were used to isolate Lennon's voice from the original cassette and complete now and then using machine learning. McCartney then redid the bass, Ringo added the drums, and they kept Harrison's guitar parts from 1995. Now and Then becomes the first and only original Beatles recording of the 21st century and the last song ever that will have all four Beatles on the track. To still be working on Beatles music in 2023, wow. Tomorrow, an official music video for the song will premiere on the Beatles' YouTube channel. It was created using footage McCartney and Starr took of themselves performing. 14 hours of long forgotten film shot during the 1995 recording sessions. Previously unseen home movie footage provided by Lennon's son Sean and Harrison's wife Olivia, and a few precious seconds of the Beatles performing in their leather suits. The earliest known film of the Beatles never before seen. I know it's true. It's all because of you. And if I make it through, it's all because of you. For more, we're joined now by music publicist Eric Alper. Eric, how big a deal is this final Beatles recording? Oh my gosh, it's so huge. I would never... I never thought that I would actually start talking about a brand new Beatles song, but here we are. And it all started back in 1994 when the three remaining Beatles gathered in the studio to work on a couple of demo tapes that John Lennon um, had recorded before his death that were given to uh, George Harrison and Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Um, and from those sessions came out of Free as a Bird, and Real Love. Both those two songs are found on the anthology box set, but one that was never really worked on due to time, and George Harrison wasn't all that keen on it, was a song called Now and Then. And thanks to the use of AI technology to be able to isolate and separate the noise and the piano and make John Lennon's voice sound that much clearer, we're getting it now that is going to be available today and also found on the red and blue greatest hits albums that come out next week. 
Is there a level of sadness to this release, the finality of it all? I think for a lot of Beatles fans, they're going to be in for a little bit of shock when they hear John Lennon singing the chorus with Paul McCartney because it is going to remind them about how great this group was and how long it's been since we've had anything new and how old we're all getting. And, you know, to a lot of Beatles fans, how come they don't make music like this anymore? Um, but there's a little bit of sadness to know that this is it. This is going to be the last Beatles song that's ever going to be released, even though that AI technology could very well bring back artists like Buddy Holly or Roy Orbison or Tupac. I bet you that all the record labels around the world are scouring through their vaults looking for any semblance of a cassette tape or real to real tape that might have been just thrown off into the wayside. Now that this new studio technology is available, they can make them sound like it was recorded yesterday. No pun intended, but the ability to to kind of keep releasing music long after an artist passes away is something that the music industry is absolutely going to start to take a look at starting now. As you said, artificial intelligence restoration methods were used to make both this song and portions of the band's Get Back documentary series. How does this use of AI differ from the other uses that artists are currently fighting against? <laughs> Yeah, I think when you're talking about AI and the music side of things, AI is already used on about 20 to 25 percent of the songs found right now on the Billboard Hot 100. They're using it to help generate the original lyrics or original music. Sometimes artists get stuck on rhyming sequences and AI and chat GPD can help out with that. Music production side of things it's really being used right now, such as mixing and mastering in a lightning speed way that you can just upload the music and have it all separated into stems. So if you have a song with the guitars and the bass guitar and the drums and the vocals, AI technology now can separate all of those different instrumentations, make you take a look at it, and you can change it from there and clean it up and do what you want and put it back together again in a whole new way. So it's used a lot now. I think where the scary part of it comes in is when people start to use AI to make David Bowie sing with John Lennon or when Roy Orbison gets to do a duet with Madonna, that's when you know that it's going to be used to fool a lot of people and exploit those artists who already have copyright regulations on their side. So it'll be interesting to see how it works on the good side, and it'll be fascinating to see and scary to see how it's going to be used for bad people. Thanks so much for joining us, Eric. Thank you so much for having me. We'll talk soon.